Hello, and welcome to another episode of Highlights from the Hill. Along with our superintendent, Dr. Kathy McLeod, I'm Jim Cousins, and we bring you this show to talk about some of the interesting people and events that are happening in the public school system. So, welcome back to another show. Thank you. Always a pleasure. I've been particularly looking forward to today um, because we get to have our special guest, Officer Powers, with us. Yes. And I don't think that most people really understand um, how much you do for the schools. Part of the reason being that a lot of what you do is internal. Sure. Um, but maybe a good place for us to start would be to talk about how your role is really K-12 and how the kids get to know you from a very young age. Yeah, I, I have five schools. I'm, a, um, I'm mostly in the high school because uh, that's where I have an office base in the high school, which is nice. Um, I do go down to the Elmwood School, the Santa School, the Hopkins School. Going down there is just to try to build uh, relationships between the kids and the yeah. police. Yeah. Um, some of my duties as the SRO is, of course, school security and safety. Right. Right. Uh, also, I, I really enjoy my job. I've been doing it almost 16 years now as a school resource officer. Um, you know, I get to go to nature's classroom with the sixth grade, and it's a good way of bonding with the kids. So when they, you know, going through the middle school, they'll have a familiar face. Yeah. And that's what I like about having all five schools, because as the kids move from school to school to school, I'm there for them. So they, have, yeah. they don't have a different SRO per school. Yeah. Um, I go to, I used to go to Washington with the eighth grade. Mm -hmm. And that was great because uh, as a kid's going into high school, I know it's they a little nervous going from middle school to high school that they'll have a familiar face that they can come and see. So that's great, and um, I like going to Washington. Now we go to New York, yeah. which is kind of yeah. uh, exciting too. So before we leave this topic, I'd like to just kind of focus on two areas, and maybe maybe we'll think about a first grader and then something I've observed with a tenth grader. Um, for our first grade friends who get to know you kind of as friendly Officer Phil. There's also been situations where we've had to come and had to have you come to have a serious conversation with a friend who might have made a bad decision or mistake. And what I think is such a great learning opportunity is that you're safe. You know, yeah. you're representing yeah. police department. Um, it reinforces the seriousness when we have to involve you. Um, but it's done in a way that's so child appropriate that I believe it has an incredible impact. Yeah, we try to uh, make it as a learning experience, yeah. not a punitive, uh, you know, we, we want the children to learn, you know, why you shouldn't have brought that little pocket knife to school right. uh, or the squirt gun to school. Yeah. Uh, we just want to teach them that, and that's where I get involved with it. Um, and we just sit down and we'll have a discussion about yeah. it. So. Yeah. And it, it, it really does help. I, I'm, I'm, I'm convinced that it does. And then fast forward to high school, you know, I've been in the high school many, many times, and you would be surprised to see how many students just go up to you, um, checking in. I know that um, you're really there um, as just an additional guide for them. They will drop into your office mm -hmm. to talk about a situation. Um, and you've just developed this incredible rapport. I've seen it at really unfortunate events in our community where you know maybe where there's where there's been a student that we've lost and you've been in such an incredible support system to our student body that um, I just I, I want to thank you for well, it but I, I also want to really reinforce it that 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 doesn't come just all by itself. You've developed it. You've worked hard at it. Yeah, and that helps going from, exactly you know going from school to school to school that they, they know me and uh, you know to earn respect, you have to give respect. Right. You know, and I have a sign in my office stating that. So, and I truly believe in that. So, um, you know, if they can't trust me, then uh, I'm not doing my job correctly. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah we've had some sad times where, at least, you know, the kids come and they feel comfortable talking to me. Yeah. So, yeah. It's I, the sad part, but it's. It you know. is the sad part, and I think it was. It's really worthy of talking about today because I think mostly people feel that you're there to make sure that the discipline happens and that the rules are happening and in fact I think if anybody was visiting or, or kind of followed you around for the day they'd see the opposite they see that you're there to support and right. <clears throat> to help kids make better choices and it's a certainly a different type of policing yeah. nowadays and, and again yeah. it's we want to teach kids we don't you know it's not even the court system now it's about teaching not punishing 
So, and this so, is this is great for that. Yeah, I want to ask you about that because Kathy, I just talked a little bit about um, how it's a different type of policing. Do you have any kind of special like I don't know seminars that you go to or do you learn about this type of policing? Yeah, there are a lot of classes that I take. Um, just how to deal with the kids, and uh, it's it's your personality too. You you have to be the right person for this job. You know the guys, my peers that I work with. You know they're always kidding with me that I'm a non-cop now. So, but I still do work overtime, and uh, yeah, I do still wear my full uniform when I'm working overtime. And, mm -hmm. and like this week, I'm back on patrol because of school vacation. So unless I can work out the uh, teachers' schedule. For the, have some and well, we and we know because we get reports from you also in the middle yeah. of the night sometimes yeah. on yeah. the weekends um, that you're working that shift. But I'm going to jump on your question, Jim, because yeah. there was a special training that both Officer Powers and I took. Um, that was actually a highlight for me in my time here. That that was quite an experience, and that was the training for Alice, um, which is going to be related to something we're going to talk about, um, which is a safety protocol. And it's a training that is offered through the junior officers, yeah, Massachusetts junior, juvenile police officers, juvenile officers. Police, right? Um, and I attended as one of only a few non-police officers at the training. I believe that's accurate. Yes, we had a few uh, superintendents there. I don't think we had any superintendents, but I think we had a few principals, maybe a few assistant principals. Uh, yeah. And it was an incredible experience. Not only it was a two-day, full two-day training. Um, Can I ask you, prior, prior to you going to that training, I, we had a discussion about Alice. We did. And you were kind of against it. And I, I could see every principal and superintendent being against it. But going through that training. Yes, that's a great, I, thank you for asking that question, even though you're the one being interviewed. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'll, so I'll briefly answer it. Um, I had been trained in an opposite kind of way, and I had been a classroom teacher and a principal, mm -hmm. and I was comfortable with this idea that, you know, traditional lockdown, stay quiet. Um, what Alice helped me understand is this idea of providing information in the moment empowers people. And we went through a very um, realistic drill mm -hmm. that at the end of it, I thought this is the only way to go. And we will right. talk a little bit more about what yeah. that means for our safety protocols. It was pretty funny seeing uh, Dr. McLeod in the, uh, we were in an abandoned skating rink. And mm -hmm. She's climbing over the boards to get into you know, a place to hide. So it was pretty good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. with my helmet yeah. And, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and everything. So. Um, so, yes, in terms of lots of trainings. And then I guess um, you've got some things here for to tell us about today. Yeah, what's yeah. Up? Like, what are right. things you're so what I brought with me today is one of our challenges at the high school. It's called the Jewel. And what it is, it's, this is the Jewel itself. Uh, it, you charge it right off your laptop. You know, it plugs right in. And it, so at home, you, or you may see, think that this is like a thumb drive or some antenna or something for the, uh, the laptop, but it's not. So this is the pod. You take the pod, you put it inside the Jewel, and then you just inhale. There's nicotine in here. I guess, from what I understand, one of these pods is equal to a pack of cigarettes, and you could take up to 100 hits from it. So, and it's very easy for the kids to do it in school. So they could just, just do it, and they just blow it into their arm. And you, it doesn't have any smoke or anything. Um, Why does it have to be charged? It's a battery in here. Oh, OK. Yeah, I'm not going to yeah, yeah. do it. But, um, no. It's like a little electronics that takes the fluid and turns it into, into like a, an aerosol, a, a, an okay. aerosol or yeah. a, a gas. So How it's, long does the charge hold for? Like if you charge, could you go uh, to the bathroom? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, yeah. Could just, you probably could go for days pocket. with okay. it. You know, so yep. uh, just when it gets low, you probably uh, get at least a, a, one of the pods, which would be 100 hits, I believe. So this is something parents could look, you know, walk into their child's bedroom to see if it, they see anything that looks like this. Yeah, it doesn't look like this is a... Uh, this is like an e-cig. You know, this is pretty obvious that it's not something that you would, you know, attach to your computer. But right. there's a charger for that, too. So if you see something like that, you know, that's it, what you do is you put oil in here. This could be nicotine, or you could just have plain that's just, uh, there's no nicotine. There's also marijuana oil, too, uh, that you could put in there. Here's another device that you, you just put, fill it up with the oil. And it's electronic. You just press the button and you inhale. So those are e-cigs, and that's well. This is—I don't have an e-cig, but these okay. are. You could fill this with the uh, the oil too. Yeah. 
Here's another one. You fill this with oil. Just press the button. And they are neatly charged to right. it. So, and now I mean, if you see jewel. this, yeah. So if you do see, this is the jewel right here. Uh, these you can are just the, buy these online, right? You can go right can down, yeah. Any place you can buy cigarettes. Drug store. Yep. I believe so. These it's are the pods. Right. So if you see these pods laying around, these are for the jewel. So. Okay. Okay. Are they different colors? They are different colors for different flavors, I oh, guess. flavors. So it, Could we I mean, see the package itself? Sure. Okay. So we'll just hold that up for the camera. Okay. But yeah. um, if, cool. you feel, if you go in cool mint. a room and you smell this uh, fruity smell, uh, a good chance that there's going to be a jewel in there. It's not chewing gum? It's not chewing gum. No. Mm -hmm. That's not Trident. So um, is there any regulations in terms of if they were... If a student was to go to the pharmacy, is it monitored? Well, you have to be 18. Are? Okay. Yeah, same so rules as uh, cigarettes. Ask. Yeah. Okay. Um, sometimes I think Ashland's 21 now that you have okay. to. So, um, are these prohibited in the high school? Yes. Yeah. So, because it's surfacing so much in the high school and other schools, so um, they increase the penalty. So, if you get caught with a jewel or any of these pods. It's a two-day out-of-school suspension, first offense. Second offense, it's up to five days out of school. So it, it's, you know, a pretty serious thing, so. Yeah. So, and this is not new. This would have related to smoking as well, cigarettes. That's correct. I mean, it, that's yeah. in terms of the discipline and our, yeah. and our policies around um, using any this kind way of substances. This way it beats the, you know, the, just lighting up the cigarette going out back here. It's very, you know, it's hard to see. It doesn't give off any... Right. Uh, smoke or anything like a cigarette mm -hmm. does. So. Mm -hmm. <coughs> okay. But that's a, a problem that I find one of the bigger problems that we have at the high school. And this is going all the way down to the middle school, too. Is it really? Yeah, it is. Okay. They have nicknames for them. The kids make up their, well, you know, I'll be in the, the, the girls' room. I got the whatever. You know, they make mm -hmm. up a name for it. Mm -hmm. so. It becomes like a trend, right? Yeah. It's something cool to yeah. do. I see more younger kids doing this than the older kids in yeah. high school. And I think, you know, increasing the penalty is, is the intention there. Um, and that policy did come to school committee, and Mr. Bishop came to the school committee, um, was to send a strong message. You know, we, we are responsible not only for students' education, but also for their welfare while they're with us. And we want to send a strong message that this is not good for you. Yeah. And this is These not. These are very good. harmful. They're harmful. Yeah. You don't know what gas is in there that's going in your body other than just the nicotine. So yeah. it's not safe. They shouldn't be doing it. Yeah. Thank mm. you. So what else do you come across in like your your day to day? I know Kathy talked a lot about how, you know, kids come to you, they talk to you, you kinda of have a relationship with them. What kinda of, what else do you do as you're wandering around the schools? One of my big problems at the high school other than this is parking. Oh, that's parking. true. So mm -hmm. you know, kids pay a lot of money for a parking lot. They, yeah. I mean they, they don't have a signed spot, but they get a signed lot. And um they pay a lot of money for that, and uh, other kids without the passes just go in there. And every car has a sticker on it, so I yep. have to go out there. And you know, because I wait till the kids come to me and complain that there's no parking, and then I'll go out. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's it's a problem, and I could spend more time in the schools than being out in the parking lots writing tickets, and I don't, I, don't, I really don't like it. So, so it's a twenty dollar fine. And most parents don't even know they get these parking tickets because, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And then I get a phone call two years later where they go to re-register their car, oh. and they can't because they have outstanding parking oh. tickets. I said, oh, did you have a daughter or son in school? Yeah, you might want to talk to them about it. Oh. Yeah, so that happens a couple times a year. Yeah, because I, I, I think we've talked about the yeah. fact that it's difficult to actually collect. Yeah. This year here, we re actually ran out of parking spaces. We don't usually run out of spots, but the senior class is so big yeah. that... Uh, yeah, the, 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 I ran out in uh, January with parking spaces. Yeah. So, I mean, what about theft, um, Officer Powers? I know that I've read recently about an increase in when you're talking about the parking mm -hmm. lots. Uh, parking lots, we, we've had a couple car breaks. Usually if the car's unlocked, people go through them. They don't want to break the windows, uh, so they go around to every car and see if the door oh, unlocked. Okay. So make sure you lock your car. Uh, in Hopkinton, if your door's usually locked, it, nobody goes in it. We okay. did have a couple incidents where the window was smashed. I think that might have been more than just trying to break in. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. We've had a few thefts lately in the locker rooms, which is, is, is tough, because um, we have no way of, we have cameras in the school, but certainly we don't have any cameras in the locker room, mm -hmm. but uh, mm -hmm. um, 
who'd had some money stolen. And please don't bring money to school. Mm. I mean, one boy, he, he lost $200. Oh, my another goodness. Another 160 And then I just got a call the other day. He lost 150 If, you know, there's, the school provides no locks for you, yeah. you know, use those locks and yeah. um, okay. just lock up your stuff. I'll leave your money at home. I don't know why you need $200 right. in school that right. day. But, uh, mm -hmm. you know, you can always give it to me, and I can lock it up in my desk, too. So. Yeah. Well, I know, Jim, you also, before we leave this topic, wanted to talk about how great Officer Powers looks. Mm. <laughs> I know, because, you know, you don't look like Batman, like no. many typical police officers do, although I have seen you dressed up like that. Yeah. So tell me about your uniform. So a couple of years ago, when Chief Lee came aboard, um, I approached him and asked him if I could change my uniform a little bit, just to make it a little softer, because I'm dealing with kindergarten, you know, dealing with fourth, fifth graders. Uh, just, you know, I still have the badge, but he agreed with me, uh, you know, a golf shirt, you know, khakis would uh, be great for that uh, role. And, uh, and I like it because I'm comfortable, too. Mm -hmm. so. But it's more kid-friendly, more yeah. approachable, uh, but they still know it's Officer Phil. Yeah. Right. So, but it's, it is really comfortable. And, and nobody would know that, you know, you might assume. So that is kind of unique. It's uni unique not only to your role, but to here, yeah. to Hawkinson. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's just like it so is. different. So, you know, yeah. it's like so much less intimidating. Yeah. Yeah. When I go to these school resource uh, conferences or um, you know, just we, we meet as a group, Metro West, and, you know, and I tell them they get jealous. So. <laughs> well, that's good. That's yeah. good. Um, so let's talk about ICS. Um, I think that's something that, it, you know, there was a recent incident with the high school, and um, I'm going to ask you to talk a little bit about that. Um, maybe start there, and then we can okay. talk about some of the training that resulted in such a, an efficient um, okay, the ICS. Did you say ICS? Yeah. I did. You say what that is. Yeah, incident command system. Okay, so what that is is that um, if we have an incident, the first person at the scene is usually the incident commander, but that could be passed off as people come in, like Kathy would come in, or the chief would come in, or one of my lieutenants, and you pass it on to them. And it's just like the headquarters where you would uh, be able to delegate uh, people, call different people in, uh, but that's a command post. That's basically what it is, and it's a mixture between the schools, the police, uh, the fire, uh, and anybody else that would be part of that. Mm -hmm. So, and, and we had an incident a couple of weeks ago where there was a live ammunition found in one of the, the uh, locker rooms. And, uh, and because we practice so often, we were able to get through that uh, situation very smooth, without panic. The kids were great. Uh, they understood. Uh, we had to uh, dismiss the kids early. And we didn't dismiss, dismiss the kids early because of the, the threat. We did so we had to do a search of the building and it would be easier for the canines to go through the building if the 1,100 students weren't there. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. uh, because of the training that we do, mm -hmm. uh, that thing uh, it was like flawless, you know. Yeah, and I'll just reinforce that um, from my perspective, it's the decision making around the training. You know, when Phil talks about the incident commander, it's really clear based on this situation, so incident command, um, based on the incident, who is in command. Mm -hmm. So that is very helpful when you have a lot of people with strong opinions in a room mm -hmm. to understand yeah. that yes, there, there's some joint decision making, but there was no time lost in making a decision on what was the best and safest um, way to move through this particular incident with all of the unknowns that we had at the time. Correct. Yeah, so, yeah, so it went very well. And there was a lot of communication as well. There were like several emails that went out from Mr. Bishop and yourself. That's correct. You know, thank you for saying that as well, because communication is our biggest challenge no matter what the incident. Mm -hmm. And the reason it's the biggest challenge is that, you know, you want to control the message and make sure that the message is accurate. So as I'm sure you can understand, writing a message in, in a high stress situation is hard to do to begin with. Um, but there's all sorts of, you know, ways of, the message getting out through social media that is not accurate right. and controlling how that goes along with the one that you're able to provide and then it changes based on information that we have throughout the incident yeah. so going through an incident while simultaneously informing the right people of the right information I would say is the most challenging part I mean other than of yeah. course yeah. making sure everybody's safe right. that's the most challenging part but then right. the communication well, I found that was the easiest part 
in this drill it in was. In this yeah. drill. We yeah. practice and we do tabletop drills all the time. We do lockdowns all the time. So we were ready for this. And, you know, the more you practice, the better you get at yeah. it. Yeah. So I was wondering, is the communications going out a reflection of the Alice training that you have both been exposed to? That change how communications happen? Well, I don't think so. Not uh, externally. Not externally, okay. no. But um, internally. In internally, yes. Okay, yeah, so yeah. do you want to explain Because we have CRT. To each school has their own CRT crisis response team okay. within the schools. And then we have the district task force, um, which is all principals and assistant principals, yeah. Kathy and uh, the police chief, the fire chief. Yeah, but Jim's question is a great one for people to understand the... I in Alice stands for inform. So alert, lockdown, inform, counter, evacuate. That's yeah. what the acronym stands for. One of the biggest differences between the way we used to do things and the way we do things now, I think is really important for the community under, to understand, especially in the, most, in the face of the most recent tragedy. Um, and that is the inform part of Alice. So do you want to talk a little bit so, about what we do now as opposed to what we used to do? Yeah, so the traditional lockdown, and it was just you, you got in a corner, got into a safe area, you, you sat down, you, you were quiet, you, you, and maybe even, you know, you didn't even barricade the doors then. Um, and that's what all you did until you were released by a police officer. Now, with the uh, Alice, your first initial is to go into lockdown. But if you're getting information from the principal or anybody that the, the, the threat is further away, mm -hmm. and you have a door right here, why would you stay there? Mm -hmm. So now the teachers, the, the, the staff, the students, they can make a decision on their own to evacuate if they feel that's a, the safe route. I so see. it's given the teachers, you know, uh, power to make a decision and to, and to do something. You know, they may just decide to stay in the room and barricade it. Mm -hmm. that's, if that's what they want to do, that's great. So right. the level of information has it's increased huge. significantly. Yeah. Yeah. It so, used to be, there's something going on, we can't tell you what it is, be quiet. As and part of the drills that you run for Alice, yes. do you actually like make yeah. up like um, scenarios, yep. um, what do you call, like announcements that go out, yep. yes. threat yep. is here, yep. threat yes. is there. Mr. Bishop may make an announcement that mm -hmm. the, the intruder is in the C-wing. Yep. Well, why is the A-wing staying in school? Mm -hmm. yep. And they will evacuate. Of course, we have to stop them because they'll keep on going and <laughs> won't come back right. until tomorrow. So, right. um, but no, we we practice that and we yeah. we change it up uh, each drill. So yeah, and we do it differently based on the developmental level of, level of the children. Mm -hmm. So the children have been involved in the district up to and including the Hopkins school. Um, at the Hopkins school level, the parents are informed immediately afterwards. Um, I don't know at the high school. And yeah, they still okay. send out, Evan will still send mm -hmm. out a letter saying mm -hmm. that we did do it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, but yeah, with the children, I mean, we couldn't do an evacuation or, or let the kids go, yeah. stay in the center school. Yeah. You know, so we'd most likely just do the regular lockdown. Mm -hmm. They may, the teachers may say, okay, now we're going to go outside and then follow them outside. But yep. it's more instruction and, and uh, you know, listening to the teacher. Yes. This has been great, but unfortunately, we're out of time. Well, thank you. Thank you for inviting me. <laughs> thank you so much for coming on oh, and sharing. It's my pleasure. Dr. McClough, it's great seeing you. Thank you. And we'd like to thank you for joining us for this episode. And we're going to leave you with some images from the 2018 Scholastic Art Awards, where almost 30 people from Hopkinton schools won.
from the outside, it looked like I had it all together. Great education, good job, but inside I was massively insecure. Drinking helped me calm my fears, but I ended up losing everything. When I finally admitted I needed help, I came into Teen Challenge. And as time went on, I didn't feel so insecure. Now my whole world has been rebuilt, and I'm not going to lose it again.